Good morning everybody and welcome to this little gathering to celebrate St Gilbert's Day that is Gilbert of Simpringham, one of a few Gilberts of which there are saints. I'm going to start by reading Psalm 8. O Lord our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants you have founded a world because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands and you have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O oh Lord our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. When I was first called upon to give a Christmas message beside Gilbert, the tree that is, I remember that there was some surprise that I was willing to be part of this because of the political connections. I recall replying that the church has five marks of mission and one of them is to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain and renew the life of the earth. So supporting the cause of keeping Wick Green as an area to be kept free of development certainly fits into that category and I know how much it means to people. I have a passion for God's creation myself and have been heading up our parish church's response to the environmental issues that are part of today's challenges. So it's good to be here to celebrate this space and the people that saved it from being developed. As the psalm I read reminds us, we are supposed to be the ones who look after creation, and yet we have so often taken more than we need of so much of the world's resources without thought of the impact to the rest of nature. And I wondered if St Gilbert would have thought the same. I admit I had not heard of him though he is still commemorated on this day in the Church of England's list of saints. The first thing I found about him was that he was recognised the calling of women to the religious right. Thus he immediately got my vote, being one of those who was called to priesthood and could not have been answered until post-1992, and even then wasn't accepted till later because of my already advanced age. Times have changed, but Gilbert was clearly ahead of his. He was born in 1083 in Sempervon, the son of the squire, but being physically unable to follow military life, he was ordained as a priest after some years of study and became the parish priest of Sempervon in 1131. He first founded a home for girls where he could provide spiritual guidance, but he encouraged the vocation of seven women of the town and formed them into a company of lay sisters. A group of lay brothers also came into being to help with the heavy work and they all kept the Benedictine rule, which is about balancing a life of prayer and work, giving hospitality and recognising the worth of every person and everything. Gilbert was unsuccessful in his bid to obtain pastoral guidance for his community in the Cistercian order, because women were accepted, and they came under the rule of the Augusti Augustinian canons, and Gilbert himself became the master of the Gilbertines. Gilbert did not follow the conventional way of doing things. So I like to think that he too would have stood up what he believed to be right, even against the authorities, when he saw a need, just as those who saved Wick Green did. He lived in a time where life was much simpler than now, and under a rule where you work the land for yourself and welcome the stranger with open arms, a life wrapped in prayer and a steady round of the seasons as the poem we will shortly hear attests. He seems to be a very suitable saint for this place, sharing his name with our tree, the one that we've come to see as representing something of the spirit of Wick Green. I'd like to say thank you Gilbert, both of you. Now we're going to hear that poem. Oh, the poem! The poem! And for my first song, <laughs> You ready? A poem by M. Benton from the Supringham Logbook. White hooded, scarlet slippered, swift, 
through swirling winter snows. Neath hawthorn boughs with berries red, the sainted abbot goes. Along the cart track's rutty way, where fragrant blossom foams, in spring's sweet air with saintly grace, St. Gilbert's spirit roams. By summertime, the ripened corn in glory stand erect. Red poppies blow where scarlet feet have stood in watch elect. When chilly mists of autumn rise from dyke and loamy fen, on leafy carpet rustling red, treads ghostly Gilbert then. Though age too crumbly, age succeeds and years relentless roll, in quiet fields where past his life immortal dwells his soul. Thank you. So it's a real pleasure to be with you today celebrating the life of St Gilbert and celebrating Wick Green being placed under the protection of the Fields in Trust, for which many congratulations to all involved with Wickford SOS. As we've heard from small beginnings, St Gilbert built a chain of 26 convents, monasteries and missions. He was unique in his time, being the only person in medieval England to found a conventual order. And as Reverend Sewer shared, to include women as well as men in his order. The Gilbertines became known for the plate of the Lord Jesus, whereby the best portions of the dinner were put on a special plate and shared with those who were poor. This reflected Gilbert's lifelong concern for people less fortunate than himself. As he inherited his father's wealth, Gilbert could have lived a life of luxury, as many of his fellow priests did at the time, but instead he chose to share his wealth with those who were poor. Wickford SOS likewise had a small beginning and yet became a, a movement sufficient to achieve the aim of having Wick Green placed under the protection of the fields in trust in order to protect local green space, wildlife and residents' quality of life. So just as St Gilbert's life and witness are an inspiration, so is the work today of Wickford SOS. The churches in Wickford and Runwell, like the Gilbertines, are seeking to support those most in need in our community through the Gateway Project, the food bank for Wickford and Runwell, which is hosted by the Salvation Army. And we remain very grateful for all the ways in which people from the wider community support that initiative and therefore provide help to those less fortunate than themselves. And then, like Wickford SOS, we are seeking to raise awareness of environmental issues and support for a planet that is threatened by human activity. Together, the churches are planning an arts festival for May that will be called One Beautiful World and that through the arts will seek to celebrate our one beautiful world and draw attention to environmental issues and concerns. So let us pray for all those uh, inspirations and concerns at this time. Almighty God, by whose grace St Gilbert, kindled with the fire of your love, became a burning and a shining light in the church. Inflame us with the same spirit of discipline and love that we may ever walk before you as children of light through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord God, through whose grace St. Gilbert enriched your church with a new order of religious life, grant us the same obedience to your will and openness to the needs of others, that all may gain the good things prepared for those who believe in you. Amen. Amen. And we thank you, Creator God, for the goodly heritage you offer us from green downland to the deep salt seas and for the abundant world we share with your creation. Keep us so mindful of its needs and those of all with whom we share that open to your spirit we may discern and practice all that makes for its well-being. Grant us the wisdom to care for the earth and till it, 
Help us to act now for the good of future generations and all your creatures. And help us to become instruments of a new creation founded on the covenant of your love. Amen. Um, hello, thank you for coming today. Um, it's St Gilbert's Day and uh, I spoke to Cheryl, I think it was two summers ago. We mentioned Dennis. Um, when I heard of Dennis, I'd been on holiday and I didn't know who'd party. We met over there in March 2019. He was the second person to arrive for our press shoot. Um, I was so pleased that someone came. Um, you never know when you do these events if anyone's going to come really until the day. So I remember Dennis coming, I'd phoned him up um, and I've known Dennis for about 20 years. Uh, Sylvia Buckley, um, I remember her introducing us, I think we were, well Sylvia knew Dennis well. Dennis was well known in Whitford. Um, I was Conservative councillor and I was elected in 2001. And you could say Dennis Swaysland was the opposition. He wasn't the Labour Party, he wasn't the Liberal Democrats. It was Dennis Swaysland. <laughs> he badgered us, cajoled us, petitioned, attended planning meetings. Um, he's an activist, activist, a campaigner. I'll always admire him. You may not necessarily agree about everything, but Dennis worked the system and he used the system. And he, tr and he tried and succeeded in making many things better, particularly playing fields and green areas. In the, in the borough. Um, he had a huge impact in talking to his neighbours, rallying the troops, petitions, etc. Um, when Dennis passed away, Cheryl uh, sent me a summation of the life of Dennis L. Swayzman. I'm not going to read it all now because I think it reads to about 12 minutes long. It is a fantastic read. I didn't know uh, the story of Dennis. I met him in his later years, I would imagine in his 60s. And I realised that um, as I approached 50, uh, how much Dennis had achieved and experienced by the age of 50. I'm truly humbled by his achievements. Um, so I'm just going to start with, with um, where Dennis was born. And I was born in Raidens Road in Dagenham, Essex, on the 14th of December 1934, to Sidney John and Emily Florence Swaysland. I had two brothers, Sid the eldest, who passed away aged 89 in 2017, and Wally, the youngest, who tragically died whilst climbing in Madeira, aged 65. Before I was born, my love of Australia was already instilled in the family. My father secured a position working on the bay boats in Sydney Harbour, so they emigrated to Australia. However, the family had to return home when the world stock markets crashed and slump of, 20, eight, of 1928 happened. My brother and elder, my mother and elder brother made their way through first with my father working his passage back for over a year through different routes, being a merchant seaman. I was only five when the Second World War was declared and 11 when it finished. Food was rationed, so at times we did feel hungry, but whale meat was not on rationing, but it tastes bloody terrible. <laughs> During air raids, German planes would soar overhead and we kids were encouraged to ding, clap hands, stamp our feet to drown out the sound of bombs exploding. It must have been very distressing for our parents spending every night in an air raid shelter. Surprisingly, I have few memories of this apart from at bedtime climbing into my top bunk bed. I vividly recall looking out of the air raid shelter on a bright sunny day in the late summer. Spitfires and hurricanes were having dog bites and leaving vapour trails above our house. This was during the Battle of Britain. I can also, also can still recall when our block of houses were bombed while we were asleep in the air raid shelter in our back garden. The only thing remaining next door was the neighbour's kitchen and the whole family was still trapped inside. While our house was being repaired, we moved to Springfield Road and this house was also hit by an incendiary that bounced off the roof. It was a standing joke that Hitler did not like us. The true reason was much simpler. We lived a short distance from prime German bombing targets such as Hornchurch Aerodrome, Ford Works, 
Sterling Machine Gun Factory and May and Baker Chemical Plant. Mum, Sid and I were evacuated for a short time to Binfield in Berkshire. We eventually settled with a Colonel Davidson and his family as Mum was employed as a cook and I had many happy memories there in the countryside. I was 14 when my father died and remember him being very ill and bedridden but it never occurred to me that he was dying of cancer and I deeply regret moaning about having to walk to the local shop to get him a newspaper to read about his beloved racing. Dad died aged 47 and it haunts me about being so inconsiderate which is why I now try to defend underdogs and campaign for their civil rights and residence rights. Due to national service at 18, Sid was conscripted into the army catering corps and stationed in Palestine. Sid was the breadwinner after Dad died and we got whatever we wanted when he was home. He loved macaroni cheese and shepherd's pie, so we had them over and over. Even today, I cannot stand them. Wally was extremely good at art, which enabled him to get an apprentice as a rubber engraver. And he then started his own business called Northampton Engraving. He was also a keen boxer and went on to become an England representative, but never achieved a full vest. Having signed on, I went to the notorious Catterick Army Garrison Camp in Yorkshire. At that time, I was a teddy boy with midnight blue suits, drainpipe trousers. I spent an absolute fortune grooming my pride and joy DA, a duck's ass haircut. We had compulsory haircuts upon reporting for duty and the barber asked, how, sir, would, how would sir like it cut today? Naively, I said just to trim. He laughed and gave me the equivalent of today's number one all off. <laughs> After six weeks basic training, I underwent further six weeks gunnery with six weeks wireless operator training. I then did a cadre post for potential NCOs. I was posted to the 6th Royal Tank Regiment in Munster, Germany. Within a short period, I was promoted to Lance Corporal and then a full Corporal Tank Commander. After demob, I was married in 1955 to my first wife, Rita, of which we only knew each other for six weeks before marrying. We had two lovely children together, Cheryl and Christine. Christine, sadly, no longer with us, having died earlier this year. That's just um, two pages of Dennis's story. And it is a brilliant story. I'd encourage anyone to, re to read it all through. Um, I saw Dennis some months before he passed and I went for a coffee round his house. Um, and I'm sure many of the people here had seen uh, the preparations he's made, the catalogue. Um, he was a great man um, and I miss him. And I know many of the people here do and Whitford will certainly miss him. Although many people may not realize his achievements um, and that the parks and places many of us play on today are those that Dennis defended yesterday. Rest in peace, Dennis Swayze. Hey, thank you. For those that don't know me, my name is Mousy. Um, and Dennis Swayzen was called Tanky because he was in the tank, so we all got nicknames. But this is a collect on behalf of him and all former military personnel that's not here and with Big G, I hope. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, all the years condemned. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank Yes, sure. Do you want? Sorry. And that gentleman there has just gone over to Ukraine with 14,000 pounds of food, boots and everything else. And that is, he's one of the 
recited Whitford as well. Oh, okay. And the gentleman's name? That's uh, Steve Parker. Remember. Steve remember. Parker. Yeah. Thank you, Steve Parker. Oh, okay. Look forward to this he cut my son's hair, my son's hair. I recognise him now. Yeah. <laughs> Is that why he looks so bad? <laughs> At least he's wearing a decent top. Um, I'd like to thank everyone and um, a few words from the Mayor of Basildon, Luke McKenzie. Thank you, and thank you for inviting me. Um, we've heard a lot about community spirit today. We've heard about all the achievements of Dennis and the achievements of everyone involved in saving this green. And I think it's testament to the will of people to be able to achieve great things, whether it's in a group or individual achievements. And if you work hard and you do the right thing, I think anyone can achieve anything. And being here today to see Gilbert grow every year, I think this is the third time I've been here now, it gets a bit bigger every single time. And I think come back in 10 years, it'll be towering, towering above us all.